Howdy howdy, and welcome to the Tea Weasel, where I pair movies with teas. Today, we'll be looking at... If you must blink, do it now! <gasps> <gasps> That's right, we'll be looking at Kubo and the Two Strings. Originally released in 2016, nominated for two Academy Awards for Best Animated Movie and Best Visual Effects. For this movie, I created what I am calling Jasmine and the Two Flowers. Here we have a jasmine tea with ice cubes in them. The cubes themselves are created out of butterfly pea tea and lavender. Each one of the flowers represents one of the characters. Kubo being the main character is Jasmine, Monkey is Lavender, and Beetle is Butterfly PT. For Lavender and the Butterfly PT, it is Frozen, which is the altered state, just how both of them are. For the Butterfly PT, I took one bag and added it to one cup of hot water. I let that sit for five minutes because I wanted a dark blue color, but you can let it seep as long as you want. Keep in mind, the longer it sits, the deeper blue it will become. After that, I poured it into a silicone ice cube tray and let it freeze. The reason I use silicone is just so it can come out easier. You can use whatever ice cube tray you have. For Monkey's Lavender Tea, I took 12 ounces of boiling water and added four tablespoons of dehydrated lavender. Let that seep for 10 minutes before straining into a separate container. And let that cool completely. Once the butterfly PT has frozen completely, pour the cooled lavender tea on top of it to make two separate layers. For Kubo, if I'm Beetle and you're Monkey, why isn't he called Boy? Oh boy. Fine, Boy. I made a cold brew jasmine tea. That was by adding three cups of water to one family sized tea bag. Let that sit in the fridge overnight. Then remove the bag. Almost forgot that. Don't forget to do that. As I mentioned, there is a pretty big cliche in the ending. That being, how good always beats evil. And this time, it's with using, once again, love, forgiveness, and compassion. These actually could be representations of the three strings as well, which we know are Kubo, Monkey, and Beetle. Monkey being Kubo's mom, and Beetle being his dad. I like how Cinema Wins actually commented about the cliché use in this. How he said he understands why it became a cliché, because that warm feeling, how it re resonates in you. He said it really well, and I don't think I can quite capture it as well as he did, so link in the description to Cinema Wins Kubo and the Two Strings video so you can see for yourself. So a quick summary for those that haven't seen this movie and don't care about spoilers. The beginning of this movie has Kubo's mom out at night on a boat running away from her dad, the Moon King. In the background there is a full moon creating a tidal wave. Kubo's mom uses her instrument to create a giant shock wave that disperses the wave and then you can see a cliff in the horizon where she's headed towards. Clouds start to cover the moon, but the Moon King moves the moon out of the clouds and has another wave come from behind to attack Kubo's mom. When this does, she gets pushed underwater and hits her head really hard on a rock, most likely causing a TBI, which you see the effects of why she's a human. Fast forward to present day in this movie, you see Kubo with his eye patch after the Moon King stole his eye while his mom was taking him away. You find out that his dad sacrificed himself to save Kubo. Kubo's mom appears to share the same powers as him. This is evident when she is asleep and the papers move around her based off of her dreams, and then Kubo has to pick them up in the mornings. 
His mom seems to be very docile while the sun is out, which is most likely because her powers come from the moon, hence being the moon kick's child. So it only makes sense that as the moon comes up, she fully awakens as her powers are able to cope better with her TBI. She will then tell Kubo stories. And then the next day when Kubo gets up, he'll go into town and use his magic origami skills to tell the stories to make money for him and his mom. It's not until a festival where you honor the dead ones and are able to talk to them where Kubo stays past sundown and the moon is out. And you will get introduced to his aunts, the Sinister Sisters as some call them. After running away from them, Kubo's mom leaps into their way, sacrificing herself to save Kubo by making his father's robe fly away. When he wakes up, he's in a snowy location, and his toy monkey is alive, with a voice of his mother. And as you find out later, it actually is his mother. Venturing forward, they sleep in a giant whale carcass, which smells like a giant whale carcass, according to the characters. You might be tempted to complain about the odor. Keep in mind, my sense of smell is ten times stronger than yours. They wake up the next morning to find out that Kubo, in his sleep, made a little samurai, which is pointing them in the direction for their adventure which leads them to Beetle, a amnesiac humanoid beetle creature cursed by the Moon King to have no memories. As we find out later, this of course is his father. They go on their journey to find the sun armor and sword, which really isn't used much at the end because, you know, love, forgiveness, and compassion. Towards the end of a second act, Kubo gets a dream from the Moon King, where he tells him the last piece of the armor in his father's old fortress. It's there where Kubo's parents die in front of him, only shortly after finding out Kubo's parents are Beetle and Monkey, and he uses his magical powers to kill his ants. After that, he flies back to his home village to kill his grandpa. Good old-fashioned family bonding, huh? Kubo gets knocked back and sees his shamisen. Sorry if I butchered that. Then it dawns on him what he really needs to do. It's not that he needs to become something else, but rather be himself. He is not a warrior, but a storyteller. So using his mom's lock of hair, and his father's bowstring, and then lastly his hair, he restrings his instrument and uses it to defeat the Moon King. Ironically, he restored the eye that Kubo took from him. And in his eye's reflection, we see the first non-full moon of this film. Now he has no memory similar to what the Moon King did to Beetle, and is at this moment where the villagers come together and say good things about this Moon King or the old Moon King, rather. Rather than bringing him down or killing them, they show love, forgiveness, and compassion to the old Moon King. And this is just a real simplified version of this movie. I left out a lot of cool stuff, like how they got the armor, and how the other ant died, and the biggest puppet Lake has ever created. It's fun. Watch it! Now it's time for the reason why you guys are here. The tea. I created this pairing because Kubo is one of the strings on his instrument and Jasmine is also a flower. So it could just be called the three strings or the three flowers. The reason why I made the butterfly pea tea and lavender tea two separate layers is because they're two separate people. They made one cube, which is the one union between them. Now, when you add it to Kubo, nothing really happens in the beginning. But as the ice begins to melt, you see the effect on Kubo. That blueness of a 
butterfly PT kind of turns the tea this green color and then you get the lavender taste with it and it all becomes this one thing just how Kubo is his own person but there are aspects of him and his mom in him I don't know maybe I'm trying too hard to do some sort of pairing for this movie because I love this movie just I don't know it makes sense to me at least if I didn't do a good enough description of the meaning with the T please leave a comment and the descriptions so for future videos I can explain things better or more in depth there's a link in the description where you can rent or buy this movie and until next time watch a movie and have yourself a relaxing cup of tea.